there was an incident in his life that, that uh, was early on in his age where we, there was a rodeo in town and he wanted to ride the steers. It was a little kid's contest and he was probably six or seven years old. And I knew he didn't want to, but, but uh, we decided to let him. And uh, at, at the time when, when it came time to really go do that, uh, he, he decided he didn't want to before the competition started. And I made him go ahead and, and, and do that. And I just think that you have to take advantage of those moments, uh, even when it's painful. Uh, there are times when, you're, when your child is, is going to want to get out of something that he's hurting. And I think it's hard for parents, but you have to not let them out of it. You have to watch them go through that pain and suffering and let them mature and grow. Uh, we adopted two or three phrases and, and some principles that we wanted to raise our kids by. One was, prepare the child for the path, not the path for the child. Um, simply, you know, stating there's going to be a lot of things in these kids' lives that we're not going to be able to shape. Uh, the only thing we're going to do is be able to prepare them for whatever pitfalls happen in that road. And, um, and, and so that's what we tried to do. Uh, but we didn't go before them uh, trying to make the road easy their whole lives. Uh, and the second was just a, an intentional statement I adopted when they were kids. I was coaching, so I took them to school every day. And I wanted to, to have something they heard me say. And, uh, you know, we told them very regularly that we loved them. But the last thing they would hear me say as they got out of the car was, do your best and be a leader. Uh, do your best. If your best is a B, a C, that's okay. I don't, we don't care. You don't have to make straight A's, but do your best. And you know, if they didn't, we would question them, was it their best? And, and, but well, there's one thing that you can do, and that is always be a leader. You can do your best to lead people, to serve others, and to make others more important. And so those were the, some of the key principles, you know, preparing the child for the path, do your best, be a leader, and be prepared for opening and closed doors. You know, and we tried to tell there's going to be times that you're going to have those moments where a door's going to be open. Know what you want to say. Know how to help. My parents did a tremendous job in uh, just preparing me to you know, go off to college. You know, and when you go to college, it's kind of like you're away from home. You can make your own decisions. You, you have freedom. Um, and so I, I just think the foundation that I had while I was at home you know, really allowed me to, you know, overcome some of those challenges and obstacles that you face uh, by making the right decision early on in, in college. You know, I sat out my first year, redshirted, uh, played behind Vince Young, uh, learned a lot from him, but you know, really just was able to kind of put all those emotions together, all the experiences that I had, and, and uh, fight for the job and earn the job when I was a, a redshirt freshman and uh, have the opportunity to play for four years. So. Um, it was really, really um, special for me. Uh, I don't know how well prepared I was for that, uh, just because I, I came from such a small school and you know playing it with so much media, national media attention, uh, fans, hundreds of thousands of people watching. But I, I just think that the way that uh, my life had gone up to that point, the way that I was raised, um, I was able to handle that in a way that you know, I know it wasn't perfect by any means, but I handled it in a way that I think allowed our team to be successful and allowed me to be successful. And um, taking my first snap was crazy. I mean, I, you know, I was, I'm, I'm an emotional guy, so I was excited. Um, you know, all, any emotions that, that you think you would have, I mean, I, I had. But you, know, you can't let those get the best of you. You just got to keep playing. And, you know, eventually my junior, senior year, you know, I didn't pay attention to anything. I was really solely focused on, you know, winning games. And when I got entered in the national championship game, you know, my whole career I had been building up for that moment. You know, practicing, studying, working, training, um, and to have it taken away five plays into a game, you know, you can imagine how frustrated and upset that I was. But you know, I think everybody has some point in their life, maybe one or two or three times that. You know, it's really you know a pivotal moment, and for me that that was it, and it was hard. It was tough. You know, I had relationships around me with my my parents, my you know, friends, teammates, coaches. Um, you know that that really kind of prepared me for that for that moment, and, and you know I'm proud of the way that I handled it uh, after the game. But I wouldn't have handled it that way had I not had the relationships that I had. Um, you know, you know, and support staff that I had around me, and. You know, you just have to trust that, you know, some things happen, you know, the way that they do, and you can't change it, and uh, you just got to continue to move on. And, and, you know, at this point, I'm thankful that I have the opportunity to still play. You know, at, at one point, 
know, we didn't know. So uh, it was it was a tough, tough, uh, tough day. It's frustrating, but um, you know we, we've overcome that and, and pressed on. The national championship uh, that day, that evening was, you know, a culmination to a to a career uh, for Colt and for me. I, you know, we had set certain goals all of his life, and you know, it's a cliche to say that he wasn't really all the honors weren't what he was after. He wasn't after all the trophies. He wanted to lead his team to a national championship and. Um, just like he wanted to lead his team to a state championship in high school, um, you know the accident, the 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 injury. I still I still remember that that sickness in my stomach when it happened. When I saw him walk off the field and tap his helmet, I never seen that ever. And I'd coached him, and it was hard for me to hurt because I knew how much he was hurting. Um, and it was very obvious, pretty quick, that uh, the injury was was very substantial. Um, and we prayed and prayed for for that feeling to come back in his arm that he would run out of that tunnel and lead his team. Uh, but you know, it never happened. And you know, God whispered to us that night and said, you know, I know y'all's plans and all the plans and dreams of men. Well, that's not really what I had planned tonight. And it's, it's taken us a long time, uh, probably us parents longer than it, took, uh, than it took Colt to understand that his purposes that night uh, were not to win the national championship. And they, were, they were much higher than that.